similar, uh, a similar maneuver has been played in the case of Israel. If you believe that there is an Israeli-Palestinian conflict, that is, if you're zoomed in really tight on the one-fifth of one percent of the Arab world that is controlled by Jews, the state of Israel, if you're zoomed in on that piece of land and you think there's an Israeli-Palestinian conflict, then nothing I do as an Israeli makes any sense. Because in that framing of the conflict, one side is more powerful and one side is less, and that is true. And one side is more heavily militarized and more Western and more prosperous, and the other side much less so, and that is all true. Um, but that's not the story, as we Israelis see it. I'm speaking for a pretty broad majority in Israel. When Israelis look at their conflict, they understand that it is a regional conflict. And they don't see themselves as an empowered majority. They tend to see themselves as a small minority in one corner of a region that is dominated by, by Islam and particularly by, uh, by, by Arab Muslims. So if you look at the size of the Arab world, it's 330 million depending on who you ask. Um, and in one corner of that region are six million Jews in a little enclave, um, which to us feels kind of precarious. And the Palestinians who are under Israeli rule in that corner of the region are a minority under Israeli control, but they're part of the regional majority that outnumbers the Jews in Israel. And if you zoom out even farther to the level of the Islamic world, you'll see that there are about, again, depending on who you ask, about one and a half billion Muslims, by some counts, a quarter of the people in the world. Uh, and in one corner of that, you have six million Jews. So that's uh, the way Israelis tend, tend to see it. And it's, it's not in the story. Because the story is a story about uh, an Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's been successfully framed that way to such an extent that even Israelis will often debate under those terms. So we can argue about whether the settlements are good or bad, or you know, the, the right-wing government is good or bad. I think it's bad, by the way. Just so you don't have to guess about my own political leanings, um, um, or you know, or whether you know this uh, act on the Gaza border was justified or not. Um, people conduct the debate in the terms that have been set in large part by Israel's enemies. It's not an Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and it has never been an Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The only way to understand what's going on here is by looking at it regionally, and it's pretty easy to do. You can just look at a map, and you'll see that there's a regional war going on from North Africa toward until Yemen and, pa and, and beyond. And Israel is not uh, an isolated instance of conflict in a peaceful region like, for example, North, Northern Ireland. Um, or Yugoslavia in the 90s. Israel is one part of a very big regional conflict. It's one player, one small player in a very big conflict. And if Israel's uh, problem was resolved tonight in a peace agreement, which I wish it, it could be, um, the regional conflict would be unaffected. And if Israel disappeared tonight, that would be inconvenient for me and for you uh, because it would be hard to find flights out. But the, the conflict in the Middle East would not be... Um, affected in any way by Israel's disappearance because the conflict across the Middle East is a conflict between dictators and the people who they've been oppressing for decades. And it's between Shia and Sunni, and it's between medievalists and progressives, and it's between all kinds of big international players like the Americans and the Russians and the Iranians. It has very little to do with, with the state of Israel. And if you're focused on this one piece of land, you're not going to be able to understand its place in, a broader, in, in the broader scheme of things. It's like trying to understand the First World War by only looking at Belgium. Are the Belgians doing a good job? Is the Belgian leadership you know, the right leadership? Maybe the Belgians can make peace. The Belgians can't make peace in 1915 because there's a regional <laughs> war going on in which they're uh, an insignificant player. And as much as I think Jews and Israelis often hate to admit it, Israel is not a decisive factor in the regional conflict in which we find ourselves at the moment. I'm just going to bl blow through the last two pieces of the official narrative, and then we can take some questions. 